so happy to be here on the mat. I'm untraining myself with beautiful essential oils coming to our sacred space. Welcome to this YouTube channel. I'm Kat, sharing two free classes a week, and this is an exciting class. It's the seventh class in our Beginners Module A. And by the seventh class, we're really starting to feel the structure evolve. We're starting to feel more comfortable. We've been practicing two or three times a week, each class before the next one comes out. And so welcome to the seventh class. Gathering all of your yoga kit, blankets, straps, blocks, and let's come and meet on the mat in Tadasa. Finding our feet, finding our connection with the earth. Feet nice and parallel, rolling the shoulders back. Inhabiting this body, this vehicle with presence here. Deep inhales, deep exhales. And now bringing the feet together and finding Tadasana, mountain pose. Checking that the feet are parallel, that we're not allowing our habits to take over our intention. Spreading the toes apart, finding the heels, and as we press down to the heels, we start to move the sacrum towards the heels, and we start to lift the front body up, and the organs start to lift, the entire inner body starts to lift. We're rolling the shoulders back, we're feeling a new sense of aliveness, of beingness here. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation, absorbing all of that. And now bringing the hands in front, simplify Vrikshasa, interlocking the fingers, turning the palms out, squeezing the elbows straight, and inhaling and lifting the arms up. As we lift the arms up, make sure that we're pushing the trapezius muscles down. We don't want to lift the arms at the expense of the neck, of the throat, of the skull. And at the same time, feeling all the time the presence of our feet. How are we standing on this planet? What are the feet doing? Pressing down as evenly as possible, making the heels firm and firm, lifting the front thighs up, opening to that new space, and two, and one. Exhaling, coming down, releasing, changing the interlock of the hands, turning the palms out, re-squeezing the elbows, feeling our feet, and pushing through the feet in order to lift the arms up. Lifting the pubic bone up, lifting the belly button up, stretching the waist. Mm, pushing up the length of the arms, feeling more openness, more sensation. Pushing up through the heels of the hands, the face relaxing, even as the body is becoming stronger and more open. And exhaling and releasing and coming down. Moving to our walls, but remember we don't need to move all of our mats or anything, just finding a wall. And lining ourselves up, using the wall to bring intelligence to the back body. Often we relate more to the front body, we see it in the mirror, we relate to other people's front bodies, but we don't look what's happening in the back body. And the back and the front have this very key relationship. For instance, if the lower back tends to arch too much, then for sure the organs in front are dropping too much. So by recorrecting the art, we'll start to access the lift of the organs. And this goes throughout the entire torso. So lining ourselves up and putting our hands behind in the arch of our back and trying to adjust the body to get the lower back closer and closer to the wall. It sometimes helps to bend the knees a little bit and to move the buttocks towards the heels. So we'll feel the lower back come closer to the wall here. And then try to keep that in place as we straighten the legs. And now simplify the Vikshasana with this new awareness. Arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out, and inhale and lifting those arms up. So we may feel that we can't lift as much because we're really watching the lower back. In fact, what it means is we're learning to lift and lengthen from a new space, a place of integrity, but the source of movement has integrity. So be patient, keep exploring that, breathing through it, and two, and one. Coming back down, releasing, changing the interlock of the fingers, 
First of all, maybe rebending the knees, connecting the lower back to the wall, coming back up, feeding the lower back imprint, and then turning the palms out. So we have to be present in very a lot of different areas of the body at the same time. And then inhale and lifting up. So we're traveling from the feet, up the legs, to the lower back, to the waist, to the arms, to the hands, all of that. And two, and one. Exhale, coming down and releasing. Ah, oh, just shake that out a little bit, ease the neck, the head. And now coming back to our mats, coming for our first standing pose. As you know, it's Utita Trikonasana. So jumping out is important. I talk about this every class and uh, the importance of being a teacher or passing our knowledge is a repetition because we only hear what we're ready to hear on the day that we're ready to hear it. So maybe this is the day to really hear this. When we jump out, both sides of the body energetic, we want to move past the habits we have of preferring one side and making one side weaker, unconsciously or consciously, and really re-establishing that even energetic outputting of energy when we want to. So bending the knees, lifting the arms up, inhale, and exhale, jump, and landing, turn the toes in, heels out, and lift the inner arches of the feet. So from last pass on, we're keeping the arms lifted and extended. Watch when this starts to happen and re-extend. Going to the right first, I'm doing the mirror image of you, Utita Trikonasan. We've covered the alignment of the front heel with the back foot, Keep gripping these legs and checking if this front thigh is rolling open. Inhale, exhale, reaching to the right. So the legs are firm. There's nothing spaghetti stretchy about this pose at all. Coming down and stretching the top arm to the sky. It's unfortunate that a lot of yoga is represented as being flexible because people don't realize how much strength and active engagement of strength is involved. Keep gripping those front thigh muscles up as you turn and twist towards the sky. Stretch the arms apart and wrap the muscles of the arms around the arm bones. The face relaxing completely, but the body is alert everywhere. And two, breathing into that. And one, inhaling up and turning to the left hand side. Preparing. Feeling ourselves everywhere, giving attention. Inhale, exhale, reaching to the left, pushing that left buttock bone forward as we come down. Gripping the legs up, stretching the arms apart, opening the chest and relaxing the face. So the effort's not in the front face, the ego, but we're just being inside the body, feeling that. Turning, twisting. Keep the arms dynamic, keep the legs dynamic. And two, and one. Coming back up, arms still stretching out as we turn to the other side. Two, three, five times today. Widen the feet a little apart, a little bit more apart on the second one. Re-grip the legs and roll this front thigh open so the kneecap faces forward. Lift the belly button in and up. Exhale, reaching to the right, really reaching first. Don't think of going down until you've reached and then coming down. Regrip the legs. They love to pacify whenever they can. We have to be stronger than the unconscious habits in our body. Turning and twisting towards the sky. Travel to your buttocks. Are they poking out, especially that front right buttock? What could you do to bring it in and then turn and twist again? And two. And one. Inhaling up, dynamic. Turning to the left, our second Utita Trikonasana. Lining the feet up, gripping the legs, preparing. Exhale, reaching to the left, really reaching, 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 and then coming down. The legs are firm, the hand on the leg is light. All the firmness is in the legs, a compact firmness. Unique to asana, really and truly. The muscles do not puff away from the bone. Keep turning and twisting to the sky and observe the buttocks. If they're poking out, draw them in more and more and more. The more integrity in the movement 
and two and one. Inhaling back up, turning the feet in nice and parallel, lifting the inner arches, lifting the inner ankles, pushing into the outside edges of the feet and then giving the arms a break, bringing them to the hips, elbows back, chest still opening. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Feel the invigoration. Okay, relifting the arms, feet out of the basana two, turning to the right hand side. So our feet are nice and wide apart, set, ready to go. Grip the legs up, even though we know we're going to bend this front knee, we still grip to start with that alertness. Inhale and exhale, begin to make that square, guiding the inner knee back so it doesn't come in. Pushing it back as we come down, extending with the back arm. Now look down the back arm and really make sure that arm is vibrant and the back leg is as vibrant as possible. And now turn the head to look over the front arm, but keep eyes coming out of the back of the skull. Breathing, feel your sharpness, your alertness, your vitality. And three, and two, good, and one. Inhaling up and turning to the left hand side. Virabhasana two, warrior pose two. Sharpness, check the feet, check that the legs are doing what you think they are. Inhale and exhale, begin to slice that square downwards, moving the inner knee to the outer knee. Feel your sharpness. Keep resisting with the back arm and pushing into the outside edge of the back foot, gripping the back inner knee, gripping the back thigh, and then finally turning the head to look over, but keeping that attention running out through the back body. And three, attentive everywhere, alive everywhere. Two, good, and one. Inhaling up, turn the back foot in. Again, lift the arches of the feet, the inner ankles of the feet, grip the leg muscles around the bones, and giving the arms a break. Hands on the hips, elbows back, front shoulders back. Breathe into the sternum plate. <sighs> and exhale, keep that area broad. Coming to Parashvakarasana now. Inhale, lift the arms again. Turning to the right, lining that front heel up with the front arch of the back foot. Gripping the legs, inhale. Exhale, entering the way we did the last pose, keeping the back body alert. Exhaling, fingertips down to the ground or a block. Top arm to the sky. Regrip the back inner knee strongly. Inhale and exhale. Turn the arm and then extend it over diagonally, finding Pashvakonasan. Yes, that's it. Reach, maximize into the pose. Don't retract away from its boundaries. Go beyond them. Stretch, open, turn to the sky. And two, grip the back inner knee. And one, inhaling up, vibrant, turning to the left hand side, lining the feet up, gripping the legs, inhale, exhale, sharply, begin to make that square with the front leg, keeping the back body active as we come down, fingertips to the floor, back arm now stretching to the sky, helping us to turn to twist, turn the top arm and extend the arm over diagonally, full pose. Now re-lift the back inner ankle, push into the outside edge of the foot. Re-grip the back inner knee, the back thigh. Stretching the waist, stretch, stretch the arm. Turn and twist to the sky, maximize the pose. Two, good, and one, inhaling up. Turn the feet back in, making sure that they're parallel or the toes are a little bit turned and the heels out. Lift the inner arches of the feet, grip the legs, and exhale, hands to the hips, elbows back, chest open, inhale into the step. And exhale, and release. Okay, heels and toes and heels and toes in, and then jumping the feet together and refinding Tadasana. Time to get two blocks for Pajvapasana and Paridita Trikonasana. So, as you know, we're putting the blocks for these poses at the front of the mat. So my mat sliding a little bit as I jump. Let's just move that. Okay, simplified partial kanasan. We're going to set ourselves up, come down one, two, three times with the flow of the inhale and the exhale, and then find the pose. Okay, so right leg forward, left leg back, and then widen the feet apart. Turn the hips to face the front. And 
inside our bodies, as you remember from last class, we're trying to move the tailbone forward and to pull the pubic bone up. Arms in front, cross the thumbs, inhale. Exhale, reaching forward, bend down. Inhale, all the way back up. Exhale, keep the legs gripped. Inhale, flowing with the breath. Exhaling, entering the pose. Releasing the thumbs, finding the blocks, going as high or low as you need. Turning the hips again to really make sure they face the front. Now first part of the pose, to integrate the back body. Using the fingertips on the floor or the blocks, try to move the sternum plate here forward as we dig the back ribs in and keep gripping these legs up, squeezing the back inner knee. And then the second part of the pose, exhaling forward, moving the blocks forward or our hands forward as much as possible so we're reaching and pull the head down towards the face. We can see our legs from here, we can see is our heel, our back heel pressing down on the ground or at least trying to? Is our back knee really gripped or is it slightly bent? Regrip it. We can also see our front leg, are we really gripping that front quadricep? all the way up the length of the thigh bone, so we feel the hip coming, so we, sorry, so we feel the thigh coming into the hip socket. Mmm, that feels so deliciously good and painful at the same time. Okay, bringing the blocks back, we're preparing to lift with our inhale. So firming the legs, inhale, lift. And exhale, and release. <sighs> Shaking that out, absorbing it, changing sides. Simplify Pashvakarasa on the left. So left leg forward, right leg back. Widen the feet apart. Turn the hips. Internally prepare the pose. Tailbone forward, pubic bone lifting. Arms in front, cross the thumbs. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. My fingertips to the floor. First part of the pose, not to be ignored. It's really easy to think, oh, I'll just bring my head down. You really want to start getting this into place. This action of trying to dig the back ribs in and moving the sternum plate forward is starting to free the diaphragm from its tension to the abdominal area. So keep activizing that. I tuck this in here, you can really see the action more there. There we go. Grip your leg muscles up, they love to relax in this pose. Regrip them up. Integrating the body systems, all of the physical systems, directionalizing. And then as we exhale forward to the second half, we move the blocks and the hands forward as much as our body will allow. Deep inhale, deep exhale, deep inhale, deep exhale. Keep gripping the legs. You can watch them with your eyes, pay attention. And every class we cover a little bit of a different angle of alignment. So if anything's resonating from the last classes, bring them in here. Bring those alignments into each and every pose. And now bring the blocks back. We're preparing to inhale and lift. Inhale, lifting up. And then exhale. Just shaking that around a little bit. Okay, coming from Parashvatanasan into Paribhita Trikonasan. Now, if you remember last class, we did one, we did it twice. And the first time we did it without a little essential detail. And then the second time we re-added in that detail so you could really see that it made a difference. So let's start straight in this seventh class with that detail embedded because we've made the experience with and without and we can see how much stability it brings. 
And that detail is, we will come to it right now, that when we twist, we want our forearm and our shin to connect. It's crucial for stability. So setting ourselves up, the body remembers the opening from the last time. Crossing the thumbs, lifting up, getting that lift. Inhale. And exhale, reaching forward and coming down. Now we're going to immediately move this block back so that when we turn this to the right, the left fingertips to the block, our forearm is connecting with the outside edge of the shin. This is very purposeful. Keep those connected as we turn and twist. And bring the arm up to Padipita Trikonasana. Feel the traction point at the bottom arm and the shin, the shin and the bottom arm, helping us to keep stability and to twist. Stretch the arms apart from each other and two, dig those back ribs in. And one. Come back down, refinding Parshvopanasana. And ready, inhale, lifting up. Bring that lightness back into it. And exhale, releasing. Okay, changing sides, left leg forward, right leg back. Pashvottanasan into Paripita Pikanasan. And you can see that with each class, we're going a little faster, a little more fluidly. So building up on our possibilities. Preparing. Cross the thumbs, inhale, lift up. Exhale. Finding the box. Pashvottanasan. Now moving that left block back so that when we turn and twist to the left, our right forearm is finding the outside edge of the left shin. Pressing against each other down there to help us find Parivrita Trikonasa. Keep gripping the legs and stay in touch with the forearm and the shin connecting with each other, helping us to turn and twist each exhale, twisting more. And two. And one. Coming back down. Legs gripping. Crossing the thumbs. Inhaling up. And exhale. And releasing. <sighs> Okay, absorbing that. So now we're going to do Parivrita Trikonasan, well, Pashvottanasan into Parivrita Trikonasan, <laughs> into Parivrita Trikonasan, but jumping from the long edge of the mat. So integrating that into our sequence in a different way. So two blocks on the right hand side. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the mirror image of you. So two blocks. On what will be your right hand side. We start facing the long edge of the mat, shoulders rolling back, tadasan, vibrant. Inhale, exhale, bend the knees, prepare the arms. Inhale, and exhale, jump. Checking your feet, checking your arms. Bring the arms in front, cross the thumbs, lift the arms up. Get that stretch. Legs gripped and vibrant. Now we're turning to the right first. So we have to learn how to turn to completely face the short edge of the mat. And now moving our tailbone forward and lifting our pubic bone up by stretching the arms. Inhale and exhale, coming down as we reach. Fingertips to the block. Simplify Pashvottanasan. Now we bring that block back behind the front heel so that as we turn and twist, our forearm and shin are connecting and we stretch the arm up to the sky. Parivrita Trikonasana. Long inhales, long exhales, making the breath work for you. And three, and two, and one. Coming back front forward. Crossing the thumbs, inhaling up, 
Turn back to face the long edge of the mat. Check that your feet are parallel. The inner arches are lifted. The legs are gripped. And exhale and releasing and relax. Okay, we're now going to the left hand side. So we move our blocks across. The feet are nice and wide already. Parallel, inner ankles lifting. Legs firm. Bring the arms in front. Cross the thumbs. Inhale, lift up. And now turning to the left hand side. And this is the hard part. How can we turn and keep the arms lifted and stay stable all together at once? That's it. Now move the tailbone forward and with the arms, stretch the pubic bone up. The belly button moves back to the back, lower back, and lifts up to the stand plate. Inhale and exhale. And finally, the simplified Prashvapanasan immediately. And now this block moves back behind the outer heel. We're turning and twisting so that the forearm and outer shin are connecting. And exhaling, finding Pani Keep connecting the forearm and the shin. Crucial point of contact. Turning and twisting, turning and twisting. Legs gripping. And three, and two, and one. Coming back down. Grip the legs, cross the thumbs, inhale up. Turn back to face the long edge of the mat. Lift the inner arches, the inner ankles. And exhaling and releasing. Beautiful. So we've moved our Pashtapanasan into how to jump and get into it from the long edge of the mat, so to speak. And now we're adding in a new pose this week. Prasadita Padotanasana. Prasadita Padotanasana. Say it to yourselves because they say that the name of each pose is a mantra on its own. So widening the feet apart, turning the toes slightly in, the inner ankles are lifted. When I touch my thighs, they're gripped and lifting up. You have to grip and lift up. If you just grip, for those of you who have a tendency to overextend the back of the knee, you'll just be pushing the back of the knee back. So I need you to lift up as well. Okay, elbows back, front shoulders back, chest is wildly, beautifully open. Inhale. And exhaling, coming down. Keep gripping the legs up as you come down. Fingertips to the floor, right underneath the shoulders. You may wish to widen the feet apart here. Whatever you do, keep lifting the inner ankles and lifting the arches of the feet so the outside edges of the feet have firmness. Breathing here, gripping the legs. Now we're trying to dig the back ribs in. How do we do that? Most of us might find ourselves in this situation where the back is rounded like a C. So what would it take to start to bring the back ribs in, which in turn is going to move our sternum and our diaphragm forward? Exploring that with the breath. Keep the legs gripping, the thigh muscles gripping up, the sit bones wide. Few more breath cycles, really traveling around the body, placing it, noticing when things fall, relifting, re-gripping, re-energizing. Sit bones widening. Good, and then hands to the hips. Elbows back, front shoulders back. And then turn the heels and the toes and the heels and the toes in. Yay, and come back and land in Tadasa. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And it is now time for Vajrasana. So grabbing two straps and two or one blankets, depending if you like to have a blanket underneath your shins at the same time. Okay, so, oh, my blanket and my straps were a bit of a mess from yesterday's filming. Okay, so the first strap, we put it over us. And we tighten this up with the buckle right between the knees. Second strap, 
a little loop. Our feet are going to go through it. And the more we work with the straps, the more adept we become at not getting entangled in them. <laughs> okay, so I only need one leg. I'm going to move this one here. I've got the padding here. This is the fold of the leg that you want. The neat edge facing the back of the knees. Get it right in there behind the back of the knees. This blanket is there to open the backs of the knees, not just to be comfortable. And now widen the buttocks apart. So we have a nice, broad, firm base for our spine to rise up. Consciously roll these front shoulders back. Feel the collarbones long, the vajra. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Every pose is sacred. Explore it with the breath. Okay, now we're coming to Vajpatasan in Vajrasan. Before we do it today, I will just place one hand on the coccyx, so right between the butter cracks, one hand on the pubic bone. And I want you to press the coccyx down and forward, and then with a the hand on the pubic bone, lift up and roll the shoulders back. So we're already placing the spine. Now bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out, and lifting. And watch that placement carefully. When does it want to move to accommodate your liftingness and do this with your lower back arches? Recorrect it, retraining, gently reforming how you move. Two. And one. Bring the arms down. Tailbone forward, pubic bone lifting. Change the interlock of the fingers, turn the palms out, and lifting up. Relax the face. We love to put our effort in the face. Take it out of the ego effort. Release the face back. Be in the body. Observe the effort of the body. And two. And one. Exhale and release the body down. Coming forward now to Yoga Mudrasana in Vajrasana. So remember we're going to hold our front ribs so that as we come forward we can encourage them to move forward. Keeping the front body as long as the back body. This relationship between the front body and the back body is crucial. Yoga Mudrasa. Ujjayi one breath for the even inhalations. Match the evenness of the exhalation. So taking the time to count how long it takes us to inhale and to match it with the exhale. And then after a few breath cycles, you're going to see if that's the right count, or if you need to add on a few counts or take away a few counts until you get to a totally symmetrical cycle of breath. Keep the arms straight, strong, vibrant. Now we're going to relax the arms and we're going to have some shoulder openers and bring our forehead to the floor. If the forehead does not reach the floor, we can put a block or a blanket to help the floor come to you. So I'm going to put that there for you so you can see what that looks like. Now bringing the arms behind the back and lift the arms up, cross the bums together, stretch your fingers widely. Lifting the arms up, roll your front shoulders back. That's the area of the shoulder that caves in with time, worry, stress, life. So in yoga, in our asana practice, we want to consciously roll those front shoulders back to encourage a new sensation, a new way of living in that sensation in the sternum, in the lungs, in the heart. Keep lifting the arms up, knowing that the imprint is being made. And then bring the hands down, changing the cross of the thumbs, Re-rolling the shoulders back and lifting the arms up. Now shoulders are often a very tight area for people. Persist. Every day that you do this practice, you're just opening the door a little bit wider. You have to be really patient, really loving with this area. Deep long inhales, deep long exhalations.
Mm, and exhale and releasing. <sighs> Let that spread, breathe. And then rolling back up. And we get to take our straps off. So it's amazing how it really does get easier every week. Every week that we practice, that we commit to it. The body responds after a certain amount of commitment in an amazing way. It's actually just waiting to hear from you that yes, we are committed to this journey of opening, of connecting, and once it feels that commitment, it's like a flower that just is on steroids, natural ones, and it just blooms and blossoms. So stay with it, stay with it. And now we're coming to core work. So pre-preparing my blanket, And this blanket is not necessary. If you're getting strong enough to not have a blanket, move it. I'm just keeping it for the first cycle for those who might want to know how to set it up. You don't want it high up here. It wants to be just supporting the lower back and the hips, the lumbar area, which is the area that tends to lift off the floor if our core is a little bit weaker. Okay, so we're bringing the arms up now, crossing the thumbs, stretching those arms back. Pressing the lower back to the floor. Here we go. Urva Pasadita Padasa. Bending the knees. And pushing the legs up to what we call 90 degrees. Rip your muscles around the legs. It's not enough to have straight legs. Spread the toes. Be fully charged everywhere. And press the lower back to the floor. Keep stretching the arms. And now lowering the legs to 60 degrees. It's harder to press the lower back here, so you really have to inhabit the lower back abdominal area. Connect, keep your focus there. That's it, two and one. And now down to 30 degrees. Press the lower back to the floor. Stretch the arms. And two and one. Good, back up to 60 and three. And two, so this is the first time we're doing it all like this. And one, back up to 90. Re-press the lower back to the floor. Good, and then bending the knees, feet down. Second cycle. Arms back up, changing the cross of the thumbs. Stretching the arms back. So each week we're increasing the intensity a little bit. Re-stretch straight up to 90. Let the eyeballs recede backwards. Don't push them forward. And down to 60, pushing out through the balls of the feet. People love to do this. Push through the balls of the feet. Spread the toes. And to 30, this is even harder. You have to grip the outer hips right here towards each other. And two. And one, back to 60. Spread the toes, and back to 90. And bend the knees, and relax. Mm, so the ability to really profoundly and consciously relax is a thousand times more powerful when we've contracted before. So moving from contraction to relaxation, different states, learning that art. Okay, ready? Third cycle. This is going to be a new, a new way of doing the same exercises. Bring the arms up, cross the thumbs, inhale the arms back, push the legs to 90. Okay, then we're going to go 10 times through 60 to 30, through 60 to 90. That's one, we're gonna do that 10 times. Ready, here we go. One. Two. Keep gripping those legs. Pushing out the length of the legs, spreading the balls of the feet. Keeping the lower back pressed to the ground. Five. <clears throat> Only two more. And bend the knees and 
with an exhale, relax completely into the ground. Last and final cycle. I'm going to move the blanket to the side and connect my lower back to the ground. Just take it up a notch here. So here we go. Cross the thumbs, stretch the arms. Urba prasadina prasadina. Active. Here we go. One. Two. Press the lower back down. Stretch the arms. Four. Keep pushing through the feet. Six. Eight. And nine. Go your all. And ten. And exhale, bend the knees. Interlock the fingers. Line your inner feet up. Dvipara Supta Pavara Uttasa. Hmm. Relax the cheeks, the jaw, the throat, the shoulders. With each exhale, let all that tension release. Look for the tension. Melt it away with the exhale. Mm. And head feet to the ground. Okay, we're going to add in a new supine pose today. It's beautiful. It's a supine twist. It's called Jatara Parivatarasan. And we're going to do variation one of the pose. So let me just move myself out of the way a little bit. Okay, so arms extend to the side. Hands are in line with the shoulders. So no higher, no lower. Stretch the arms. Bring the feet, oops, what's that thing? Oh, nothing, it's a strap there. Bring the feet off the ground and move the calves away from the backs of the thighs. So you have a 90 degree angle here. Do not bring the knees in towards you like this. Have the legs, the thighs, sorry, perpendicular to the earth, the calves and shins parallel. Okay, we're going to the right first. Inhale. And with the exhale, move the legs over to the right, keeping the inner knees touching. Your knees will want to do this. Try to keep those inner knees touching, which keeps the hips stacked, which keeps the lower back nice and safe. And what it does is it makes us twist from the middle spine, the thoracic spine, and the dorsal spine, the upper back, which is much harder to twist from. So don't worry if you're feeling like, oh, if I just move my knees apart, I can twist much more. I don't want to twist from the lower back. I really want the middle and upper back to start to learn how to twist. So just going gently, going smoothly. Each exhale is just bringing even just a millimeter more opening is great. Seeing if we can turn our head to the left, away from the legs. And bring the legs back up to the middle. Okay, check in with your back body. Are you really still in the middle of the mat? Repositioning. Other side, Jatara Padivatarasana. Preparation one. Restretching the arms. Feet off the floor. Move the calves away from the backs of the thighs. Find as much as possible that 90 degree angle here. Inhale. And exhale the knees to the left. Let's move that. There we go. And turning and twisting to the right. And again, staying connected with our inner feet and our inner knees, which the moment we move our attention away from them are going to love to compensate for us so that we can feel better about our twist. But we really want to twist with integrity. It doesn't matter how far you twist, it matters how we're twisting. Each exhale helps to open the body a little more to the twist. Mm. And then bringing the legs back up and feet to the floor. 
Okay, long vertical stretch. We haven't done that in a few classes, and it's a really important pose. It's basically a simplified vikshasana, which we do at the beginning of class, but on the ground, where we have the entire earth giving us guidance around what our back body is doing. So finding Suttatarasana first, where we roll the thighs in, the inner heels are lined up, the heels are firm, and the legs are gripped. If you touch your thighs, you want to relax the thighs, feel the looseness, and then tighten and feel the difference, and that's the grip you want to keep. Now with your hands, manually move your bum towards your heels, and connect each heel to each bum. Feel that relationship, right heel to the right bum, left bum to the left heel, Keep that, keep the bums moving towards the heels, the lower back close to the floor. That's it, now lift the arms up, cross the thumbs, stretch the arms back. And it's like we're on a stretching rack where someone's pulling our fingertips away from our heels. And simultaneously, someone's pulling our heels away from the fingertips. And everything between those two points is getting longer and stretching without lifting the lower back off the ground. And what this means for most of us is that we're starting to open the side ribs here underneath the armpits. You can think of it as gills on a fish. It's an entirely new way of breathing. Yogic breathing comes from the side ribs, the pranayamic ribs. Keep stretching, reaching, and two, and one, and exhale. Relax completely into the Mm, I love it when we get to exhale and relax completely into the ground because each time we do it feels better and better. Okay, one more time to the longer vertical stretch. We're going to roll our thighs in, heels down. Now lift the right heel up just a little bit like this and lengthen the leg. Move the bottom towards the heel and repress the heel down. So that's further away. We've gained length. Okay, let's do the same with the left. Left heel up. Move it away. Left heel, buttock to the left heel and press the left heel down. Now everything here is connecting, the buttocks to the heels and we've lengthened our legs. Bring the arms up, change the cross of the thumbs and re-stretch the arms back. Keeping those connections that we place everywhere. As we're stretching the hands and feet apart, the lower back is not lifting up. How do we make that happen? And where do we feel the new stretch coming, the new spaciousness coming? Maximize into that. Go right to the edges of your capabilities today. And three, and two, reach, reach, reach. Good, and one, exhale, and relax completely. Here we are again. Ah. Oh. Mm. Okay, now one more Supatarasan. So lying the inner feet up, heels firm, spread the toes. So it doesn't look like a lot is happening, but now you know how much is happening inside. Placing the attention there. And now, bend the right knee, keep the left leg as it was. Interlock the fingers. Ikkapada Suttatarasana. So we're connecting to the pose all the time. Every second, every millisecond, we're watching and we're adjusting and maintaining that contact with the pose, with the alignments, and with the breath. And now changing sides. Before we change sides, we find Sutta Tadasan. Looks like the girl on Monopoly. We want to come through that, reconnect, evenness, and then bend the left knee. Ekapara, Sutta Pavanutasan on the left hand side. Slow the breath right down, especially the inhale. Often when we start yoga, when there's much more accessibility to the exhale than the inhale. But the inhale is really bringing in that fresh energy. So, Look at the inhale and lengthen it to match the exhale. Mm. Mm. And releasing. And now to end, both knees towards the chest, realigning the inner feet, realigning the inner knees, 
Vi para sutta para utasana. And this is one of those seemingly simple poses that reveals its genius each time that you do it. It's a very subtle, energetic space. So just trusting in that, even if you're not feeling much, part of the journey of practicing is becoming more sensitive. The sensitivity will come. Just trust, breathing, exploring, observing, being curious. Shavasana, or inverted Shavasana, even better. So, finding our wall, taking our blankets, eye covering, sweatshirt if it's a little bit chilly, and let's come and meet in the So I'm using two blankets. It's nice to do the to get a little bit. It's nice that happens when I talk too much. It's nice to do Fadi Takarani on the ground, not on a mat. Because the mat, when we come out of it, is like a sticky kind of feeling. So I'm just going to move this back. And everything else is really sliding. Try to and try that. It really makes the exit so much smoother. Okay, here we go. Getting in as close as I can. <sighs> Rolling my legs open. <sighs> so you can see my palms are turned down here, which means that even if it doesn't look like it, my front shoulders are not open. So I've got to lift the shoulder blade up, roll the front shoulder open, and the arm turns. Tuck the shoulder blade up as I move this front shoulder down. And if you inhale, you'll feel a whole new sensation here, availability to contact this area. Now we're going to do the same with the other side. And when everything feels really comfortable, not niggling, but really comfortable, we're going to exhale, closing the eyes. Inhale. And exhale, releasing completely into the ground, as if each and every cell in our body was just allowing itself to unclench, to ungrip, just melting with gravity on the shapes provided into the ground.
the rest of your love, really the rest of your peace. And may we help all those that we come into contact with to feel some of this. All peace. Gently just bending the knees and letting the feet slide down the room as we begin to re emerge from the depths that we've been in back to the surface. Bringing that depth with us, we're going to move our hips back and because we don't have the mat, we're able to just slide back pretty effortlessly until our lower backs come to the floor. Deep inhale, deep exhale, observing this awakening. Every time we finish a practice, it's like being reborn again. It's been a deep purification exchange and we're coming into life fresh and new. And now we're gonna roll over onto the right hand side and push ourselves back up. We can feel the difference already. The brightness, the difference of how we feel now compared to how we felt when we started. And now just ending with a last burst of gratefulness, placing the hands on the sternum plate, the spiritual heart, and becoming Reiki healers, energy healers to ourselves, closing the eyes, inhaling in through the crown of the head. And exhaling that energy out through our arms, through our hands, into our bodies, just pouring gratefulness into ourselves. Over and over again, receiving that gratefulness. And when we feel abundant, that our cup runneth over. And releasing the hands back down, opening the eyes. Our practice is complete. Well done. Super commitment. Seven weeks into it, practicing a few times a week. We should be feeling, seeing some real changes by now. Please let me know how this experience is for you. And in the meantime, have an incredible week. Namaste. And see you again next week for our eighth class. Take care.